Evan Weiner looked at the 1990 professional baseball agreement that forces communities with minor league baseball to renovate their stadiums or else. You may be in one of 24 Major League Baseball cities, or your town may not have any baseball. You have never been to a minor league baseball game, and you have no interest in going to one. But the odds are you're going to be paying for minor league baseball through tax dollars, just the way you pay for schools and garbage pickup. And it's because of a 1990 deal called the Professional Baseball Agreement. At a time when schools and governments are slashing their budgets, sports and recreational programs are taking a major hit. But baseball wants more money from the taxpayers, and in some instances, they will get it. It's all because of the PBA, and that's scheduled to kick in in April of 1994. Some people aren't happy with the agreement, like Barry Gordon. He owns the Yankees' AA affiliate in Albany, New York, and the Glens Falls Redbirds, the St. Louis Cardinals' single-A short-season team in the New York Penn League. Well, beyond a doubt, the new PBA, uh, as it is now, and with the changes that they're anticipating, uh, will cost us more money as an owner. Uh, they're trying to do several things. Uh, one is they're trying to uh, force an upgrade of ballparks uh, throughout the country. Now, a lot of these ballparks were established many years ago. Their municipalities uh, built them, and they really don't have the money to upgrade the facilities to any great degree. Some of the standards will be waived, but some will be very costly if uh, a lot of these small towns want to keep minor league baseball. And the money's going to either have to come from uh, the local towns, uh, some interest groups, or from the owners uh, to upgrade the stadiums. As an owner, when you look at that agreement, how do you feel? Do you, or do you feel that it's a good agreement or a bad agreement? We're not happy. I mean, of course, you're always in agreement with an upgrade of standards. We're not happy with the costs that are going to be involved, and we're not happy with the fact that these ballparks were built under other standards, and all of a sudden they're requiring us to uh, upgrade them, and in some instances fairly substantially. We still provide a very good place uh, in, in most ballparks for the teams to train. Uh, the minor league players and we still get the fans out there which is very encouraging for the ball players but to uh, you know have to change uh, actual construction standards and, and lighting standards and uh, locker room standards in some of these uh, stadiums is going to be extremely expensive and as an owner is going to be very difficult because uh, in many instances the owners are going to have to put in some of the money possibly uh, to upgrade these stadiums if they want to keep their ballparks in certain cities if it's the local towns that own the stadiums and the minor league owners who have to incur the financial risk, is baseball sticking its nose where it doesn't belong? Jimmy Lee Solomon, the director of minor league operations for the commissioner's office, doesn't think so. To say we're pushing our nose into a place where it doesn't belong is absolutely wrong. This is a partnership, uh, a community uh, of fans that uh, most times own a facility or provide the uh, fan base for a franchise. The individual franchise owner who owns the franchise and that territory in, in, in that local community. And then the major league uh, affiliate that provides the actual baseball product to the franchise owner and to the fans. That product uh, is the players, which is all played for by the Major League Club. The umpires all play for by the Major League Club. The managers and coaches all play for by the Major League, Major League Club, as well as a trainer. And all the equipment is provided by the Major League Club. So to say we're sticking our nose in a place where it doesn't belong is kind of a stretch. We're uh, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars into these communities, bringing these players into these communities to provide this product to the fans and to the franchise owner. I think it's more of a partnership. OK, it's partnership. But the professional baseball agreement, which was reached in 1990, puts a lot of burden on local municipalities to either upgrade or build new stadiums. North America is still recovering from a recession. And Adam Colton, who's the executive director of the not-for-profit group Sports Fans United, thinks Major League Baseball ought to be giving something back to the local community. Well, I don't think you should have to pay for the minor leagues. I mean, the real issue is why isn't Major League Baseball paying more for the minor leagues? Major League Baseball, unlike any other business, enjoys a blanket exemption from the nation's pro-consumer, pro-competition laws. And uh, in return for that exemption, 
baseball has a public responsibility. Baseball has a responsibility to the taxpayers and to its fans across the country. And baseball isn't living up to that responsibility. It's paying millions and millions of dollars to players like Barry Bonds and Bobby Bonilla. And then going uh, to states like New York and saying we need $30 million to bring the stadiums up to a certain level. Look, there's no reason why taxpayers should have to pay that money. The money could uh, easily come from Major League Baseball. Minor League Baseball is a hot property, and the Major Leagues know that. And the Major Leagues are in the position to make some demands. In New York, State Senator John Sheffer is proposing legislation that would require Major League Baseball to keep a team in the community for at least 10 years if that community puts up money for a new stadium or renovates an existing one. The state government in New York has been approached for nearly $30 million in funding for minor league baseball stadiums throughout the state. We have 15 minor league teams, and most of them are in need of stadium renovations, in some cases new stadiums. And in fact, pursuant to a 1990 professional baseball agreement, the majors have essentially imposed on the minor league teams the obligation to renovate their stadia by April of 1994. So the minor league teams have come to the state government in kind of a crisis atmosphere saying, we've got a price tag of about $60 million and we're asking the state to pay for half of it. Now, a lot of us, certainly on the Committee on Tourism, Recreation, and Sports Development that I chair, want to be supportive. Uh, baseball is a critically important part of the heritage and the fabric of this state, and we want to try and help. Uh, but if ever there was a time when the state could simply dole out $30 million because it has been requested, that isn't 1993. Well, all across the country, fans are paying for new stadiums for their minor league teams. There's a tremendous demand for minor league baseball, and I think in part because sports uh, is a really important part of our culture, and especially in these small towns. But in return for our millions of dollars, we're not getting anything right now. I mean, we are getting no guarantee that the team isn't just going to pick up and leave when they get a better offer from a new city. There are uh, communities all across the country that lost their minor league teams as the minor leagues have gotten less and less support from Major League Baseball. You've seen uh, fewer and fewer minor league teams. You see communities really hungry for minor league baseball, and they are offering good deals for teams to move. And if we're going to spend this money, if we're going to spend money to to build new stadiums for minor league teams, then we ought to get some guarantees from those teams. And so we have to be extraordinarily protective of the taxpayers' interests, the interests of the local communities and local taxpayers, and that's what this new legislation that we've proposed does. It primarily focuses on a commitment out of Major League Ball that would say that if the state is going to be a partner in this funding effort, that they ought to be willing to make a commitment in terms of time in that community, a 10-year commitment um, that a team will be in that community. To avoid the syndrome where the state and the local government uh, put in millions of dollars in a new stadium or stadium re renovations and then find out a year or two later that that team, that franchise is being yanked from the community. Sheffer is hoping that his legislation will become a model for other states who are looking for financing to either upgrade minor league stadiums that now exist or build new ones. It may be for naught, however, if Congress repeals baseball's antitrust exemption, the minor leagues may not exist as we know it today. Well, the way we know it is a hard one to answer. I, I don't know if the minor leagues will always be there in the form and the shape that we know it today. Uh, there are many people who, cr who criticize the major leagues and they criticize us by saying that the minor league system is a terribly inefficient system uh, and that we, and, and it, we've reported that we spend millions and millions of dollars into this and put into the system on an annual basis. So I can't say it will stay exactly as it is, but the minor leagues, I feel, in my personal opinion, will, there will be a minor league of some, some sort. Uh, that will always exist because player development is so important and so critical to many teams in their quest to win championships. 
Uh, I think, though, it is important, though, to realize that the major league clubs are not trying to walk away from the minor leagues and say we don't need it. What we're trying to say is that we've got to look at every element of the minor leagues and try to make it better. We held a hearing here in Albany, I believe it was on February 9th, where we were looking at that professional baseball agreement and all of these issues that we've been discussing today, essentially the relationship between the majors and minors. And I asked that question because there had been testimony at Washington hearings that the elimination of the federal antitrust exemption uh, would hurt the minor leagues. The testimony that we had from a really wide variety of sources here in Albany at that hearing indicated to us just the opposite, that it could strengthen both major and minor league ball. My position, though, is that they need to understand that minor league ball is an important part of that picture and that if they're going to perpetuate baseball's exemption, that they definitely need to ensure that baseball is going to be a helpful partner to minor league teams and host communities and taxpayers as opposed to an obnoxious big brother. And uh, to date, uh, my own judgment is that Major League Ball has been more in the obnoxious big brother category. And I'm hoping that the whole exemption question and the other hassles and issues that Major League Ball is going through will result in a much more responsible attitude on their part. We're joined now by Evan Weiner. Evan, what do you think is going to happen to baseball's relationship with the minor leagues? Well, it's more than just the relationship with the minor leagues. Already in Milwaukee, the owners of the Brewers have asked the governor, Tommy Thompson, to help out in building a new stadium so the Brewers could stay there. In New Haven, you have local investors that have put up the money for the expansion team, the Ravens. But around the country, like in Bakersfield and Modesto and Augusta, Georgia, and a whole myriad of cities, they're asking local governments, national governments, federal government, or the state government to help out. This is a very complex problem and I'm not sure where it's going except the taxpayers may end up paying a lot. Do you think all these changes will take place by 1994? Perhaps, but perhaps not. The PBA can be reopened by the major league owners or the minor league operators this winter. If that happens, this story becomes a moot point. Thank you, Evan.